Today marks the beginning of a new adventure, somewhere familiar. Almost one year ago, we began our journey through one of the most difficult mod packs available. Our first run took us all the way to Tier 6 LUV. But Tier 6 is definitely not all this pack has to offer. Today we begin Season 2 of Greg Tech New Horizons. Here in Season 2, our goal is the Tier 7 rocket. However, crafting the Tier 7 rocket is not going to be easy. We have 10 Greg Tech tiers to progress through. Magic mods, space exploration, planet excavation, building a base, chemistry, power generation, automation, farming, material processing, and so much more. And so it begins, here we go again. I am so looking forward to getting stuck in here. Okay, um, we're next to a river. I did kind of scope out the seed prior to generating this world, and our new base location is going to be in those mountains up there. And our first mission is absolutely to rush the bed. Wait, do you guys hear that? What is that? Is that in-game? Am I, am I hearing things? <laughs> we have to get a move on here. Nighttime is going to be very, very dangerous, as you probably are aware with the infernal mobs here in GTNH. Let's get the first quest. We are also on the lookout here for all of the gardens we can find. We need this for the healing axe quest pretty early on. That's definitely something I want to go for this time around again. Ah, finally, some gravel. The gravel we can craft into flint and also craft our first crafting table, I believe. Two planks and two flint. Two logs and two flint. There we go. Oh, and it's getting night already. Let's grab these berry gardens. And it's time to AFK. See you in the morning. It's too dark in here, though. 6 a.m., bright and early. Let's pick up the rest of this gravel along the shore. Yeah, so still our main objective is to get the bed, first of all. Even though it's not till later on in the quest book, I think... I mean, generally, following the quest book is a good idea in New Horizons, with the exception of a few items, and one of those is the bed. It's definitely worthwhile to rush the bed. And avoiding all mobs. It's actually really scary when you come across these guys. Roguelike Dungeon? Yeah, Roguelike Dungeon is also really nice for the bricks. We need bricks here in the early game, particularly in the Steam Age. Anything decent in here? We can probably take a furnace, but we're still yet to get a pickaxe. Oh, actually, we got some armor. A uh, useless potion. We'll take the fish. I'll take the torch as well. Torch is valuable. Oh, he dropped a sword. Sharpness too, I'll take that. Anyways, let's stay focused here. We have a lot to do this episode. Hello, sheep. Goodbye, sheep. <laughs> Taste my sharpness to sword and a full inventory. Wait a second, the getting wood achievement? We already have a crafting table. I forgot about all the quirks of GTNH. <laughs> Alright, we got a little bit of crafting to do. Two fences. We need a soft mallet. And we are actually short two more wool. I don't see any more sheep on this mountain though. But yeah, this is our new base location. Check this out. We are going to be living in the middle of these two mountains right here. I don't know why it's not rendering further. But yeah, I managed to find this really awesome valley type situation. There is one problem though that we have with this. Otherwise, this seed is basically perfect. I like, I'm so inspired looking down there. Oh, there is some more sheep up there. Yeah, one silly problem at a time though. Okay, that should be the third carpet. We can now get our bed. Uh, oh, did I leave the... I think I left the crafting table down there. And just in case we don't come across any more, let's grab some saplings from the rubberwood tree. Yeah, that valley right there, I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a process though, it's going to take us forever, but it, I think it's going to be worth it. And this is our first achievement of New Horizons, the bed. I think we should head back down to the river. We need some more gravel for flint. Hello, witch. <laughs> Sun is also going down for the third night. I forget, is it 6.30 we can sleep or 6.34? I used to sleep on the dot every night, and that's something we'll be doing here for the foreseeable future at least. So one of my objectives this time around in Season 2 is I want to make this pack more accessible to all of you guys. I understand that New Horizons is a very intimidating pack to start, but it's definitely doable if you, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to speak too soon because there's, there's definitely a lot of mistakes you can make here. And I don't want to say we're going to have the perfect run, but there's definitely some things I've picked up from the first run I think it's going to be useful this time around. And I think those are going to be worth sharing. Well, well, what do we have here? That is an interesting looking... Is this wood? The extra food here is absolutely welcome. The more food we eat in New Horizons, the more hearts we gain. So we want to be a bit of a chef here in the early game. Anything else of value? Any blacksmiths here, actually? Oh, nice, we got the Tinker's Hut in here. 
Awesome, that gives us all the tool parts and the part builder, etc. We're going to need Tinker's tools here to begin with. Nice, and we got the railcraft structure. That's also a good source of bricks early game. And creosote oil. Yeah, we're kind of out of inventory space here. Maybe we should go and drop our things off at our new base site. We'll come back for the village later on. After doing some more gathering and scouting around the spawn area, I picked out a base location at the foot of the mountain next to the forest. I secured a safe location for our bed and continued with some basic resource collection. And finally took some steps to address the lack of food. Alright, we are surviving and, I, well I wouldn't quite say thriving, we've still got a long ways to go in that regard, but let's head back to the village and grab basically everything we can carry. Would be nice at some point to get a saddle for one of these horses. How did I miss that the first time? There is a blacksmith here. We are going to take these furnaces. I think it's actually a quest. Is it not? It is a quest. It must be a crafting task. Yeah, so quests are split into, I think, two different variants. We have retrieval and crafting. Iridium? Oh, wait a second. Wait, no, this is the, the useless one, right? Yeah, pretty much. I'll take the bronze, though. And we'll take the ladders from the villages. Yeah, so there is some important things to understand about the quest book. The crafting tasks means that you have to craft the item for the quest to count. Retrieval tasks, you just have to hold it in your inventory long enough with the quest unlocked. You know what, we'll take the doors here as well. And that fact about the quest definitely caught us out in the first season quite a lot, so I want to try and avoid that as much as possible. Oh, and second Tinker's Hut here. Flint pickaxe head. I think this is actually one of the quests, and flint shovel. Maybe, maybe that's also going to be a crafting task though. Anyways, let's focus on getting these quests done and unlocking the Stone Age. There's the extra furnace for the quest. I did already gather 64 cobblestone. Oh, and we get our first loot bag. Sword of the Cosmos. It's food. <laughs> I'll take the food. Oh, and one more for the wool quest. Hey, more food. Asparagus soup. And that is actually our first extra heart, I believe. Yeah, we're on, we've are on. we got our first yellow heart. Perfect. Apparently, we need to craft an extra soft mallet. So there we go. The sunsets are so beautiful here in New Horizons, right? Look at this. Yeah, we should we should actually sleep. No messing around. And we found our next quest. Rest in pieces. That should also unlock the bed quest, which we've already crafted. Vegetarian lettuce wrap. All right, and besides gathering a great wood and silverwood tree, which I don't think is actually essential to completing out this chapter, we have unlocked the Stone Age. Oh no. I was gonna say, we found our great wood tree here, but I forgot these actually have spawners underneath. Oh no. No! Definitely should have followed my own advice, avoid all combat in the early game. You know what, I think that also actually continues our streak of dying in every single episode 1 of every single series on this channel. And that is why I'll never play hardcore, in fact leave it in the comments how many deaths you think we'll have by the end of this. Alright, we have made it back to our Stone Age base here, and we have one of every garden variety planted. We also have a tiny little patch of crops planted by the lake, and we have a little hole marked out here in the side of the mountain. So the plan is to expand upwards and into this little valley, but you may remember I mentioned that there is a problem with this seed, and that is the humidity level. This whole valley here is only 20% humidity, as you can see in the top left, and humidity is a very important factor early game. And it's definitely a consideration you want to make before picking a base location. However, we do have one more loot bag. A wood to copper chest upgrade. That is actually a really great reward for the Stone Age. And speaking of the Stone Age, now that we have this unlocked, we get our lunch bag. The lunch bag we can fill with three different varieties of food, and I believe it will cycle between them. Since we can't eat the same food too many times in a row. Part of the reason why I want to go for this healing axe quest. We also get our food journal, which tells us how close we are to the next bonus heart. And we need to eat 39 different varieties until we get a second yellow heart. It's quite a lot. Maybe we should set up some sort of a kitchen this time around. I kind of like that idea. Oh, no, 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 you don't. We're going to run. In the direction of the village, I want to pick up those tinkers huts. Well, more specifically, the contents within the tinkers huts, like the part builder, the tool station, the pattern chest, the stencil tape. Oh, that had something in it. And we also take the piston here. Pistons are expensive in this game. Alright, so our next priority is to get the basic tools down with Tinker's Construct. We are going to need a decent amount of clay for that, and another unfortunate thing about our base up there is that we're not really close to any large bodies of water. I also don't really want to craft the tools before the quest is unlocked, because we do have to hold the individual parts. 
All right, so step one is two stacks of clay. Step two is a completely full inventory. I think there's gonna be a lot of back and forward to this river here. However, we kind of have to embrace the grind here. I compared the early game of New Horizons to school. When you're there, you don't wanna be there. And when you leave, you wanna go back. So since we're here, we're just gonna enjoy it. We're not in any particular hurry here. It's all about the journey. Now that we're back at the base, we're gonna start smelting up some stone using the coal coke we got from the village. And I'm gonna start digging out this area for Tinker's Construct. Actually, on second thought, this is probably going to get moved, so we're just going to place it down here and we'll move it later on. Fortunately, I did pick up some gravel for flint and we can use that to craft a mortar. We can use the mortar to turn clay into clay dust. Small piles of clay dust. Yeah, I think this is our only option for now until we get machines. And the clay dust we can turn into a bucket. The bucket we have to smelt through the furnace. Inventory is full again. This should be our quest. Okay, we're gonna have to craft a few more mortars, but instead of doing it like this, we're actually gonna make a mortar and then crush down gravel, which should give us one-to-one -one flint. That way we can craft a ton of these mortars. And the mortars we can use to crush down wood into wood pulp. We wanna be a bit careful here. We don't wanna use our whole supply, but we need a stack for the quest. There we go. The quest also calls for us to make paper, and for that we need water. Unfortunately, as you can see here, no infinite water sources in New Horizons. So securing a source of water early game is very important, something I would like to get this episode actually. However, a bucket with the wood pulp can give us two pieces of paper. That's so horrible, that recipe. I think it's like 16 for the quest. I don't think we'll have enough here. There we go. And sleep. And some of our crops are actually grown here. I want to overhaul this farm. Now that we have a water bucket, I may actually move it for a, further up the hill, just to make it easier to access. Does this guy see me? Hey buddy. Yeah, I think we need a bit more wood. It turns out we actually did use it all. How am I supposed to cut all these trees? They're, they're all massive, look at them. Every single one of them around here. We need a lumber axe here. Let's make sure we give ourselves a door here. We don't want that skeleton sneaking in behind us. In one of the recent updates to New Horizons, they changed a lot of the, the quests to be retrieval tasks rather than crafting tasks. Unfortunately though, it doesn't seem like that was the case with this Tinker Time quest, so we need to craft all these part builders again, even though we stole them from the village. Oh, come on. <laughs> of course it's not a simple recipe. String? I think we get string from one of the quest rewards actually. I saw that in the first chapter. Yeah, here we are. All right, here we go. The pattern chest, tool station, stencil table, and finally the part builder. Yeah, this is what we're after. Now it's time for our first tools. We need to do a bit more crafting though. I think we need an extra blank pattern that's gonna make us make more paper. Before we do that though, I wanna try and clear some space in these chests. Staying organized in New Horizons is very important. I have mentioned multiple times about the Healing Axe quest, which is why we have all these gardens planted. And the Healing Axe can actually passively restore hunger. In fact, I think the quest is also unlocked for us now. Fishing, farming, cooking, if I remember right. Yeah, hunger, no more. Not only do we need all of the gardens, we need two stacks of tofu and 20 of all of these meals, and these are not easy to make either. Yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a project, probably taking multiple episodes, but as you can see here, this is also a consume quest. So when we submit the gardens, it's gonna take them off us. Oh, I left the rest in the chest here. Yeah, let's submit what we have. So we're missing the water gardens, berry, desert, the nether gardens, and two more tropical, which should just grow on their own. And I guess we haven't found textile gardens yet either. I would also like to take this opportunity to promote a little project Metis and I have been working on, also known as the Shadow of X on YouTube. He was very prominent in my first season of New Horizons. Throughout the series, he wrote over 50,000 words and comments in New Horizons. <laughs> so he's a very, very knowledgeable person in this game. And him and I have been working on a bit of a spreadsheet, a guide, so to say, for New Horizons. I want to update that as we go, and I'm also going to be working from that. I think you guys are also going to find it useful if you're playing this pack. I mean, I say it's him and I, but uh, I only done like 10% of the work on there, maybe even 5%. I done like the healing axe and some of the tinker stuff. All the rest of the testing and data was all Metis. So thank you very much, Metis, for all your work and testing. He puts hours and hours into creative mode testing in this, in this pack. It's crazy. But yeah, the link to that Google Sheet should be in the description below if you're interested. So now, after making sure we got all the mandatory parts of the quest, all that's left to do now is assemble our pickaxe. We went with wooden binding, wooden tool rod, and flint pickaxe head. We also require the flint shovel, and finally, the flint hatchet. And one of the really awesome things about Tinkers in this version is that we're gonna be keeping this basically all the way throughout the game. So long as the tool has full durability, we can actually freely swap out the parts, so just because it's all flint right now and garbage, that doesn't mean that it needs to stay garbage. We're gonna add an obsidian binding that we found in the village. 
And since we have a spare tool station, we're going to take this with us. Make sure that we have some extra food for our journey. And it's time to use our tools for more gravel and sand collection. In fact, we need a lot of this. Probably like 10 or 12 stacks. I'll see you next year. <laughs> but this is a good opportunity to start leveling our tools. It's a good idea to get the tools as early as possible. Oh, you know what? I should have brought the bed. I forgot what it feels like to play this pack. You play for a significant amount of time and you end up one step forward and two steps back. Our problem right now is that we're short one cow and I, I don't know where the rest of the guys went here. There, there used to be a few of them. I have a sneaking suspicion that they actually walk into the cactus and their AI is too... <laughs> it's just not smart enough to take a step back. So uh, I think we lost a lot of them to these cactus, these cacti. And we do actually need leather here to proceed. Not immediately, but it would be nice to start getting a cow population. A wild cow has been spotted in the grass. See that guy? There's two of them. There's three of them. You guys are coming with me. I'll spare you from the cactus. <laughs> hey, that's too many sheep, not the sheep. Oh, and we're like 200 blocks away. I forgot, this is 1.7 as well. These guys ain't as smart as they are nowadays. Well, we did manage to make it unscathed. Perfect timing as well. I think the sun is just about to set. Oh, nice, achievement. So let me give you a bit of an update on the happenings around this base, if you can call it that. How did that guy get out? Can they really climb ladders? Is that what it is? So yeah, I've been farming here like crazy. We got a whole bunch of different variety. Every time we come across a new fruit or vegetable, you can craft it into the seed. And we can also add soybeans and pea seeds. One other extremely important crop to get planted early on is cotton. Cotton can give you string and you need a lot of this. And normally when the requirement for cotton comes up, it's in extremely large quantities. So it's a good idea to get that planted as early as you can. Yeah, other than that, I've just been continuing with the resource collection. We got a bunch of sand, gravel, and clay, which is key to progression at this point. And inside these furnaces, we've been cooking the coke oven bricks. Although it appears we ran out of coal coke. Yeah, I, I guess we were a bit short here. Do we have at least enough for the quest? Quest? Aha, another brick in the wall. I believe the rest... Oh yeah, look at, look at this. Why did they have to give the farm a durability? There's no way this has always been like this. Anyways, I think we just have to craft the coke oven bricks into coke oven bricks. Yeah, and that unlocks the first molly block of the game, the coke oven. We get two large bacon sandwiches. And a new heart. You may also have noticed that we start getting these coins from the quest book. We can actually use these. Uh, I didn't use them enough last playthrough. They are especially good early game, but there's a quest or there's a chapter in the quest book that can allow you to buy different materials. Like for example, leather. I keep finding eggs here. Is there chickens underneath? I did fill in all the area I've, ter I've terraformed here, or at least I think I did. Or is it above us? I have no idea where these chickens are. I can hear them clucking constantly. All right, so for the time being, we're just gonna put our coke oven outside here. Eventually we're gonna have, I don't know, maybe like 18 or 16 or 18 of these things. I haven't yet exactly decided the route we're gonna take for progression and fuel, but one thing is for sure, we're gonna have multiple of these and I'm thinking that we're gonna stick them over on that hill over there. So why is the coke oven important? Well, we can use logs. Any type of wood logs I believe works. And this will convert logs into charcoal and also give us creoso oil. Creoso oil we can use to power various machines. We can also use it as furnace fuel, and it's actually a very useful liquid to have early game. It's also a very good idea to start farming rubber wood. I think I'm going to actually flatten out an area for tree farming over there. As the quest book points out, we will need a lot of wood. You need more wood, yes. We do need more wood, and we've not found spruce or jungle wood yet. We need the wood to fuel these coke ovens here. So for right now, we're going to continue to follow the quest here. We can hand in charcoal. Oh, this is a choice reward. I think we're going to take the food here. Actually, you know what? That was a mistake. 
That was a mistake. We're going to have to get lava for our Tinker Smeltery, and we can't carry lava in those buckets we've been using from clay. <laughs> we should have taken the bucket there. Talking about the Smeltery, though, that is actually our next major goal here. With our newly acquired fuel source, we're now ready to progress into more advanced materials than stone or clay. Iron or copper, for example, yes. So in Gregtech, you may or may not be familiar with the way ores work. Oh, that's right. 256 cobblestone. We do actually need this quest. There's no skipping it. We are going to be smart about the way we do this, actually. So as you can see in the top left, we are currently in an ore chunk. Normally, what I like to do is find the center. F9 will turn on chunk boundaries. Yeah, right here is the center of the chunk. I like to dig straight down. Actually, I don't like to do that. I'm, I'm not brave enough these days. <laughs> oh, we found it already. It's Cassiterite Sand. And if you right-click the ore, and since we've discovered this Garnetin vein, the Cassiterite Sand vein, there's a button up the top to show ore veins. It marks it on the map so we can very easily return without having to use journey map waypoints. However, as you can see here, the harvest level is copper and we still have flint tools. So this is something we're going to have to come back for later. If I remember correctly, it's every three chunks is classified as an ore chunk. And ideally what we're looking for here is iron or copper. Iron, copper, tin is really the, the ones we want to get super early on. We've come across a small ore, so small ores don't give you quite a full ingot. At least I don't think. I don't remember, actually. It's normally an indication of what you can find below you. However, there are multiple different ways you can obtain iron. Oh, there's small silver here. I think we can otherwise only get this in the Twilight Forest. But yeah, there is multiple ways to get iron. It comes in things like banded iron or limonite, which can all, when you process them correctly, give you iron ingots. And all of this information is available in NEI. It shows you the primary, the secondary, and, and, and then any other byproducts which also belong in the same ore vein, as well as the planets you can find them on. So for example, this limonite vein we can find between the Y level of 10 and 40 in the overworld, which is, I think, what we're going to run into here. We're at 25 right now. We still haven't found the ore vein. That's a little bit suspicious. Unless maybe it isn't limonite. It could be something else entirely. Lava. That's no good. That's not what we want to see here. I just gave up on the last chunk. A few chunks over though, we did have another Cassiterite sand. Let's just keep this going and try to mark out as much of the surroundings as we can. Our shovel is broken, but we can repair it very easily with flint. Oh, this time we got Spessartine. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna find the actual ore so we can mark it with visual prospecting. Spessartine is very useful once we hit like the end of LV, I think it is. Until then though, we don't really have much of a use for it. I hear more lava though. Oh, there we go. Plus one modifier on the pickaxe. There it is. The manganese vein. A few chunks over, we got our first brown limonite vein. This is actually one of the best ones because we can also get malachite from this and malachite will smelt into copper. So that is actually three of the essential ore veins that we've already found here. And in fact, I also stumbled across two coal veins here, which are relatively close to the surface. So I'm not going to do a whole ton of mining, but I'm going to spend the next, I don't know, 30 minutes or so collecting this iron. And you know, I can understand why a lot of people hate this with such a slow pickaxe. Like, look at this. This is glacially slow, but you know what? I actually have fun. Call me crazy, but that's... <laughs> Let me do some mining here. You know, there is actually one thing we can do here. We can turn in four stacks of cobblestone. It is a consumed quest, unfortunately. And we get a free iron pickaxe head, which obviously will increase the mining level. I'm actually going to take the loot back here. Not interested in the shovel or the axe head. Bone meal. These loot bags are a scam. You know, there is an argument to be made not to actually repair this and do the upgrade with iron, because that means our repair material is iron and we're not really so abundant on that right now. So you know what, I'm, I'm gonna take the decision to keep it at flint. Sure, it makes this a bit slower, but we might have a solution by the end of this episode to speed it up. The last thing we want here is to be stuck without a pickaxe. So after gathering a decent amount of iron and getting some XP on the tools, I headed back to our base to breed the cows and harvest the crops. After refilling the coke oven and dropping off our inventory, I headed out west to explore to see if we could find a village. Across the river and into the fungi forest, we found a lot of different interesting things along the way, including some new foods to try, some extra pans gardens, a very weird situation here with the water. <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on here. However, we kept on going here hundreds and hundreds of blocks into the unknown. I 
I see it. Finally. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's been like five Minecraft days of just running around here aimlessly. It's a party here. What are these guys doing? Look at them. <laughs> Wait a second, who is this guy? Yeah, if it wasn't already obvious, we are here for the Tinker Smellery. Before we collect that though, let's see what other goodies these guys have got. Actually, we come across these desert gardens. This is one of the ones we were missing. Rhubarb, chili, corn. I think we've got all of, the, all of these. Yeah, onion, young onions. We take the bookshelves. Another Tinker's Hut. I don't know how much this can help us. We'll take the piston. Oh, nice. We got one of these. Uh, I think this is Thomcraft that adds these things. Normally, there's some, there's some decent stuff in here, but apparently not this time. We do have a blacksmith, though. Bronze boots. I'll take those for sure. The shears we'll definitely take. Screws and rings. Those are a pain to craft, so we'll take those. And a crowbar. You know, I really like these shoes, actually. Yeah, we don't want to mess with those guys over there. There seems to be quite a lot of gardens here, so let's actually just grab all eight that we need, plus one more so we can grow more at our base. One other thing I didn't actually mention earlier in the episode is that there is a few other configuration options that I've changed with this pack that I think is worth pointing out. Yeah, let's turn these in. If you guys are at all familiar with GTNH, you probably know there's a pollution mechanic. I decided to completely disable it this time around, and without it, it's gonna give us a lot more flexibility in the way we choose to play. So that's something to keep in mind when we are designing future setups. It's just simply a config option. If you're having trouble disabling it yourself, then feel free to join the Discord. There is a lot of useful information on there. <laughs> These guys, those guys are still having a party over there. I don't know why they're having so much trouble with that fence. Yeah, unfortunately, this thing doesn't come with a controller, so that's something we have to craft. Doesn't look like there's much else of interest here in this village. Again with the water, who knows what's happening here? This is very mysterious. Oh yeah, we also did manage to pick up a spruce sapling. Found it in one of those witches' huts. But yeah, I think it's time we head back to the base, around 800 blocks away. On the way back, we should make sure we keep our eye out for aluminum gravel. Every 30 seconds we're eating something here. I forgot just how bad the hunger system was in this. But that's all the more reason we need to rush the healing axe. In fact, I might try and do that next episode, we'll see. We'll see. That is a funny colour sheep. Oh, 1.7. <laughs> I miss 1.7. Oh, this is sneaky aluminum gravel right here. Almost missed this. That's also the quest. Perfect. 10 and some change might still not be enough though, so I'm gonna hunt for some more. Assuming we have enough food to survive out here. Oh yeah, and I have a feeling we might also need some more sand, gravel, and clay for the controller block. All right, here we go. Final stretch of this episode. A few chunks over from the tin vein, we actually found this chalco pyrite vein, which is copper. Finding a copper vein so close is just the cherry on top to this episode. There is a quest here which calls for at least 48 ingots of copper. Another little tiny small tip with these ore veins is it's generally a good idea to start at the top, dig out a cube and then work your way down two layers at a time, or maybe three layers if you have the hammer. But yeah, try to start at the top of the vein and just work your way down. Often these ore veins are layered though, so we're going to find pyrite ore lower down. It's not going to be at these high levels, it'll be like 10 blocks below us. Sometimes you want to target those specific ores, but I still find it's a good idea just to start at the top and mine the whole vein. Oh, no way. Small lapis, that means that there is a lapis vein probably in this diagonal direction underneath the lake. And with lapis also comes calcite, and we need calcite here for the, the steam age, actually. It happened again. The mystery of the chicken. Where is this guy? What on earth? I can hear him. <laughs> Please tell me you guys hear that as well. Anyways, our coke oven has been busy here making up some charcoal and creosote oil. We are going to start smelting all this copper up. I also went out to get a decent amount of iron. I think we need just over a stack of iron for the quest. There should be some more in here. There's our quest. Oh, choice reward. I think we go with food again. I believe it's under multi-block goals is the Tinker Smeltery quest. Oh, wait a second. This quest is new. You're not prepared, but they are. How about go borrow one from the locals? Yeah, this never used to be a thing. I was... <laughs> I just spent like half an hour trying to get all the materials for this quest here. And I was about to proudly show off the collection of grout somewhere. We need to get organized here. Hey, where did I leave that actually? Oh yeah, it's in the crafting station, look at this. And this is not easy to make because it needs water buckets, gravel, sand, clay dust. But since we've already prepared this quest and stole the, the smeltery, we're kind of going above and beyond here. So uh, I guess we'll craft these. These also have to be smelted through the furnace. I also gathered a bit more sand, gravel and clay than we need for the smeltery. And actually, I think we have enough for a second coke oven already. 31, is that enough? It is enough, slightly more than enough, in fact. And unfortunately, these buckets can't pick up the creosote oil. We need at least an iron bucket. 
So I did make up this Greg Tech hammer. I think we can start to make some iron plates. Oh, I missed the sound of these tool crafts. And then three iron plates and a hammer, I believe, gives us the bucket. Perfect. Now we should be able to grab this cruise oil. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, we can use the creosote oil inside the furnaces as furnace fuel. This is a really nice fuel source early game. This should also be our copper quest. I have also started preparing a small area here for the smellery. I haven't quite decided exactly how I want this base to be laid out yet. At least not in the early game. I have some plans for later down the line inside this valley. After the last video on this channel though, the staying motivated video, I had a lot of comments asking how I go about building bases. So in this series, I want to try and uh, explain my full thought process. Right now I have no thoughts because I will. I haven't thought through it enough <laughs> with this seed. But that's something we'll definitely go in depth. It's worth taking a lot of time for the early game base because I ended up rebuilding it multiple times in season one and that is a mistake I do not want to repeat. You know what? Actually, I think we made the right decision going for this quest here because these guys are mutually exclusive. We do not get these quest rewards if we just go for this quest here. And having aluminium ore berries early on is pretty decent, actually. So we need a casting channel, the smeltery controller. It takes a water bucket for seared bricks, are you kidding me? Yeah, and it does want us to craft them as part- yeah, it wants us to craft 28 for the quest. I know that the forestry work table exists, but honestly, I don't mind doing it manually. It's only 28 bricks, right? We need two smeltery drains, two seared faucets, a seared basin, seared tanks, and I think that's it, other than the casting table which needs seared stone, and for that we actually need to get our smeltery operational. That is something we're going to save for next episode though. I wanted to show you guys this valley area in full, look at this. These chickens will have to be removed swiftly, but we can make this work, right? <laughs> Anyways, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in episode 2 of Grectech New Horizons.